How much power and energy does a solar panel produce? We'll look at a 400 watt solar panel. That's the most common size of solar panels being installed today on homes. We'll calculate the energy production from the 400 watt panel in different parts of the US. And then we'll see what kind of appliances you can run with a 400 watt solar panel. Let's start with the basics. The power output of a 400 watt solar panel is the instantaneous energy that the panel produces. For example, at 5 a.m. in the morning, a 400 watt panel might only be generating 120 watts due to very little sunlight. But by 9 a.m., it could be closer to 320 watts. Now, real life conditions rarely allow a panel to hit its full 400 watt rating. Typically, the maximum output hovers around 340 to 360 watts of DC power. Converting the DC power to AC means you lose a little more and you are at 300 to 320 watts of AC power. Interestingly, solar panels produce more power in cold, sunny conditions. So a panel in Alaska actually generates more instantaneous power than it does in California. But overall, energy production will be much lower due to fewer sun hours or daylight hours in Alaska. So let's talk about energy production next. Power output over time equals energy production. So a 400 watt panel might produce about 2,400 watt hours on a sunny day in New Jersey. That's because New Jersey gets about six sun hours of daily solar radiation in the peak summer months. So 400 watts into six hours is 2,400 watt hours. Now we measure solar production using sun hours, which are the equivalent hours of perfect sunlight in a day. For example, 12 hours of regular sunlight might translate to just six sun hours. And that's exactly what happens in New Jersey. A 400 watt panel could produce a maximum of up to 2400 watt hours on a sunny summer day in May or June in Jersey. Now to find the sun hours for your location, check out the National Renewable Energy Laboratory's PV Watts website. Go to pvwatts.nrel.gov slash pvwatts.php. Enter your location. Just the city and state works fine. I'm going to go with Princeton, New Jersey. Click on the Go, then click again on Go to System Info. Don't worry about changing any information here. Go ahead and click on the Go to PV Watts result link. And here's the data for Princeton. The first column shows you solar radiation. And this is the sun hours for each month, an average for each month starting from January to December. For example, Princeton gets about 2.72 sun hours in December. And that increases to 6.22 hours in May. And on average, through the year, New Jersey gets about 4.22 hours per day for the year. Here's data for a location in California. Sun hours range between 4.24 to 7.33 hours, and averages about 5.95 hours per day. Alaska, on the other hand, ranges from just 0.47 hours to 4.42 hours, averaging 2.36. Now, let's look at what appliances a single 400 watt panel can power. I'm going to be assuming three sun hours of available sun a day. So a 400 watt panel will generate about 1200 watt hours daily. Now the energy produced by the panel must either be stored in a battery and then converted to AC for use with your appliances in your home or your RV or boat. This actually results in about a 20% loss of energy. So your available energy is 0.8 times 1200 watt hours, which is about 960 watt hours. Rooftop panels that are installed on homes are usually installed without batteries. Rooftop solar panel production also suffers from similar losses, since the same conversions happen from AC to DC. Here's what you can run with 960 watt hours. You can charge a smartphone. They use about 15 watt hours per charge. So you can charge it about 64 charges. You can run an LED bulb, 20 watts each, for about 48 hours. You could power a laptop 
uses about 65 watts for 14 hours and 45 minutes. You could watch TV at 60 watt TV for 16 hours. You could run a mini fridge, uses about 60 watts too for 16 hours. However, you won't be able to power larger appliances like a standard fridge or window AC or power tools with just one panel. For that, we'll have to consider multiple panels. Now, if you're looking for solar for an off-grid cabin or RV and you want to run larger appliances, you'll have to check out my video on designing and sizing solar and battery system for such setup. And for those of you who are looking to install regular rooftops solar, I've got a video on calculating the total number of panels you'll need. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please like and subscribe for more solar tips and guides. And if you're looking for solar, don't forget to reach out to me. See you next time.